Welcome, Roberto. Thank you. And uh, is this on? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys, thank you so much for coming to this lightning session about uh, Java e batch processing in the real world. Uh, usually I do this session in like uh, 15 minutes, so I only have 15, so I'm probably going to be a little bit quick. Uh, anyway, I'm uh, not going to go into much details about myself, but these are my contacts. If you wish to contact me after the session uh, about some questions, you're free to, to do it. Um, so now going to the topic here. So why, why, why do you batch? So let me actu actually uh, ask you a question. Who uses batch in their uh, work today? Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of guys. I know that I have a couple of discussions with a, with a few guys, and actually batch is a pretty boring technology. Sorry, I have to say that. Uh, it's not like exciting as all the things are going on there, like Docker or microservices, but the thing is, the, I think the reason why you raise it so many hands is because Batch is with us for a long time and it's going to stay with us for a long time because on your enterprise applications or any kind of work you should be doing, uh, you usually have a lot of batch processes that you need to implement. And that's why it's pretty boring because it usually involves like some kind of financial transactions that you have to process or some kind of wages. But anyway, we use Batch because we want to make use of the other resources that we have. Right, so most of you probably use batches when you have like on midnight, right? So you who runs batches around like midnight or during the evening, yeah, you use it because you want to use the resources that are not available for you uh, during the day because their their focus is on the application that you're running for the users and so on. And this is like kind of shifting the time of processing. So this is the reason why we really use batch, to, like, to power out those resources that we have and to, re to take over this amount of repeatable work they have to do every day and so on. Anyway, I don't know if you ever think about this, but batch is on our everyday lives. Every time you go to like, the grocery shop or when you're on your traffic lights uh, or when you're cooking food, so have you ever heard of the term, I'm going to bake a batch of cookies? A couple of, well, most of you, okay. So think for, it, for it in an instance. When you go to the grocery shop, you just don't go there and, and buy a piece of an apple and put on the, on the shopping cart and go away, go home, put the, sh the, 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 the apple on your uh, home, go back to the grocery shop, buy like a toothpaste or something, go back home, and you don't do this for, for, for the items that you want to buy, right? Because it, that's stupid. Uh, we, we, we do things in batch, so you go there by wherever you need. The thing, same thing when you go when you are, are you are on traffic lights, you just don't have like one car going on a green uh, light one at a time. You have like one or two minutes where you have all the cars going on because that's more efficient when you do things in batch. Because we as humans we tend to unfocus and disconcentrate when you're trying to do multiple things at the same time or much better when you're just focusing in one thing at a time. So just pretty much uh, sums it up. Uh, you want efficiency and that's why you're doing these kind of things. You also want to reduce costs. I mean, when you're doing uh, that batch of cookies on the oven, if you're doing like one cookie at a time, you're going to waste so much power and electricity, for instance, than if you're just going to use like 10 cookies or 20 cookies at a time. So this also uh, allows you to save costs and uh, reduce costs when you're doing batch uh, stuff. Now, this was like a quick introduction to stuff. So bringing the state of the art. Uh, on the Java world, uh, that's the one we are looking into here. here. Uh, we already have a couple of batch things that allow you to do batch. One of those are Spring Batch. Uh, who's using Spring Batch here? A lot of people. So IBM WebSphere also has a, um, a way to do batch and Hadoop. But me, as a freelancer, as a consultant, I tend to look into a lot of projects uh, with several clients. And one thing that I really, really hate is I go there, and usually they roll their own uh, batch API. So I kind of have to learn everything on my own. So who is rolling their own batch API uh, in-house? Yeah, I have a lot of people there. So this is kind of a problem. And 
since batch is something that we really need to use every day, or at least on our applications, and people are rolling their own in-house frameworks, something needs to be done. And that's why uh, on the latest Java E7 um, version, we got the JSR 352, which means that we now can implement batch process in a standard way. Uh, so, for instance, for the guys that are already using Spring Batch, this is actually pretty good news because uh, the Java uh, version for JSR 352 is very similar to Spring Batch, and you're probably going to recognize a lot of things. Actually, the Spring guys contribute to the specification itself. Uh, and a good thing also, it is not only available on a Java E environment, you can also use it on plain Java SE. So, Instead of rolling your own uh, batch uh, in-house framework, you cannot just do standard batch uh, whenever you need. For instance, you want to do a report, you want to do process some financial transactions, you can just do this in a standard way. You have an API you can use, and very, very easy to use, and I'm going to show you how. So I'm going to just show us some code now. Uh, usually, I, when I'm doing the full session, I just go for all the APIs, but we don't have time for this, so I think it's going to go work best if I show some code and something. I mean, this, the, the, the topic session is real-world applications. I could have used some kind of uh, sample, uh, very boring sample, so I came up with a fun sample at least, since batch is boring, right? Let's try to make it more fun. Uh, anyone recognize this image? Yeah, a couple of people. So this is actually a screenshot for a game called World of Warcraft. Have you ever heard about World of Warcraft? Yeah, most of us. Anyway, World of Warcraft is a massive multiplayer game. It has around 500 servers around Europe and US alone. And they have, in in-game, in they have something called an action house. So an action house is something just to buy and sell uh, items in-game. Uh, so for you to have an idea, they trade around 70k items per server per hour. If you do the math, that's around... 32 million items uh, per hour for all the servers. So I think that's a very good, interesting uh, example that we can use here, and we can apply a batch to do some funny stuff uh, around. So actually, the game also has like a REST API that you can uh, query. So what I did was I uh, queried that the REST API to download that action house data to see which items were for sale, uh, and so on process the data with batch, and then I try to extract some metrics, try to see some trends on items that we're selling. So that's not different from a stock market, but just apply it on a game. Actually, I don't know if there is a stock market that gives you those kind of data, but probably there is. Anyway, it's more fun this way. So let's go into the code. Let me put this in a presentation mode so you can actually see it better. Um, so let's start with this. Can you guys see the code? Okay, awesome. So uh, one of the things that we can do with batch is we have to start with an XML. Yeah, right, I know XML is pretty boring, but I mean, we don't have annotations for it. Uh, but anyway, this XML allows you to define a little workflow that you can use to say what you want to do with the batch. So for the guys that are familiar with Spring Batch, this is probably very uh, familiar to you because that's uh, pretty much the same, uh, except some, some uh, namespace that changes. So basically you have like uh, on the job, an HTML job, you have something called steps. So steps is something that you want to do, and then you can create your own flow and saying, I want to create this step that's going to do something, and then this step is going to go to another step. And then you can just create like some deciders that's going to go w one way or another and so on. So this is a very similar uh, example. So this is just only one step. So the step itself needs to have like a, an element the, on what you want to do. So the element I'm using here is a batch set. So batch set is something that allows you to execute a task. Task is only a piece of code that you want to execute associated to that step. And an interesting thing here is you have something called partitions here as well. So actually what I'm doing here is I want to execute this batch set, which is uh, just a, a plain uh, Java class I'm going to show you in a minute. And then I want to execute it in two partitions. So this also allows you, the batch that you have also allows you to like, execute things in parallel and execute things much faster. So you have this right out of the box and you don't, don't have to worry about this if you're using this API. Now, to show you like, uh, the aspect of a batch set, 
So you have it like here, low reduction file batch set, nothing much. So just uh, you just have to extend an access batch set, have a process method, have your code there, and that's it. So what I'm doing here is just like I'm trying to connect to all the servers around the world and trying to get some data. Um, now, another uh, piece of uh, processing is uh, this. So I have, this is another XML that I have. And as you can see now, I have something called the chunk. So a chunk is another style of processing that you can use in batch. So the chunk is composed of something called a reader, a processor, and a writer. And this allows you to do some kind of ETL ch style processing. So like extract data, transform data, and load data to some, somewhere else. So you can extract it from a JSON file, process it, and load it into a database or something else. So what I'm doing here is like the REST API gives me a JSON file, with, which I can download, read, uh, and load into a database. So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to show you this very, very quickly. So the reader that I have here is just it's just composed with something else. So I have, we have implemented something called an item reader. And then I have four methods called open, which of course is going to be executed when you, do, uh, when you first start the reader. Then a method called close, so you can just uh, start and finalize resources here. Then you have something called read item. That's where you're going to perform the read that you want to do. So actually here I'm just reading the JSON file with the JSON parser API. This is going to fill out an object, and that's it. Now for the processor, also just implement the processor, gets an object. This is the object that I got from the read here. So if you can see on the read, I just return an auction type of object. And actually if I return null, that means the read is over, and that's it. Uh, so process job again, here we go. So here I'm just filling out uh, some, uh, some additional parameters on the object itself. And then finally, the reader, or the writer I mean, it's just uh, receive the list of items, uh, then I just proceed to the database. So look, look just uh, in case that um, the item reader just reads an, uh, an, uh, an item at a time and returns an item at a time. The processor gets an item at a time, and then uh, the writer has a list of all of them. So now looking again to the XML, you see here something called item count. So item count meaning that I'm going to read 100 items, so I'm going to read item 1, I'm going to process item 1. I'm going to read item 2, I'm going to process item 2. And when I read and process 100 items, then I'm going to write them at the same time. So this is more efficient uh, when I do that. And this is always done in a transaction. So then you can have mechanisms to fail or catch exceptions there and do something else. So let me just show you, like, uh, a bit of a demo, really quick. So this is like an, an application that I've, I, that I've done uh, to showcase the, the, the data. So basically, I load some data here. Uh, actually, let me just clear this one over here. So this I pick, I pick a server. I'm going to put like an item over here. So 171110. Going to do a search. Oops. Maybe I didn't got the item very well. Let me see if I have wet. Well, I need Wi-Fi to do this, so let me try it again. Seven six one three nine. Okay, so yeah, I have this graph that I draw here with all the, the snapshot data that I got from my, my database. And now, if I want to update this data, I go. I go here to my to one. Uh, address that I have here. Actually, this is not right. OK. So I'm going to run this job. This is actually running a job. And as you can see, this is pretty quickly because I'm also using a Java 8 and Streams uh, API with parallel streams. So actually combining the power of the batch stuff using partitionings and parallel streams. So this is actually connecting to all the 500 servers around the world and querying for new data. So it took like 30 seconds. If I didn't use parallel streams, it took like three minutes. And now I'm going to try to process a file. This is probably going to take a little longer. So let's wait up, and I'm going to show you something else. 
So what I did show you there was um, the pieces that took up the JSON file and added it into a database. Now I want to import some statistics that was the like aggregated data itself. And so this is like this step over here called uh, the import statistics. And as you can see here, when I have the step, I have an ID. And I just do a next and move to a next step. So now, for instance, here to aggregate the data, I'm just using a plain JDBC query, where I just do sums and mins to fill out uh, this table over here. Uh, and that's how I aggregate data. So you have a lot of ways to do stuff on the batch, so this is like a very small overview on things, and I think we are out of time. Um, thank you so much for having me here. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know. I'll just leave you with uh, the end slide, which has all the resources. So this is available on GitHub if you want to play with it, uh, and another couple of resources that you have. So thank you so much again.